Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be discussing how to design horn antenna using HFSS. These are the calculated design parameters. We have uh, for the uh, waveguide, we have AX, BY and LZ. For the aperture, we have WAP, LAP. Then the spacing between aperture and uh, the waveguide, it is SAPW. The dimensions of the uh, radiation box are WRAD, that is a width, LRAD is a length, ZRAD is a uh, height of the radiation box. Now let us start with the simulation of horn antenna using HFSS. So for that first what we do, we will add the variables. How to do that? Go to project, select project variables and here in this window we have to add all the variables that we are going to use for creating horn antenna. So let me just add first the waveguide dimensions that is dollar $AX length and the units here it is inches type I and you can enter automatically it will identify the inches. So the value what you have to enter is 1.59 inches click OK. Then similarly we will add the dollar by it is again length and inches the value is 0 0.795 inches then we'll add the length of the waveguide that is dollar lz length inches the value is 1 inch after entering the waveguide dimensions, now let us move on to the aperture dimensions. So to do that, what I do, I will add here dollar width of the aperture that is WAP. This is length inches. The value is 7.95 inches. Similarly, we will add the length of the aperture dollar. L A P. This is the length and inches. The value is three point nine seven five. Then we add the spacing between the aperture and the waveguide. So that is dollar yes W A P. So this is length and inches, value is 5 inches. Next we will add the dimensions of the radiation box which is used for uh, finding the radiation parameters. So for that what we do, we will add dollar WRED, that is the width of the radiation box, length and inches, the value is 8.8 .8 inch. Then we will add length that is dollar L radiation box. So length it is inches again. The value is 4.4 inches. Then we will add the height of the radiation box that is dollar Z R A D length and this is 15 inches okay now we have added all this is inches let me just change yeah now we added all the variables here which are used in this project okay now the next thing is we have to create the <coughs> geometry so to do that let us click apply and yes okay now one by one we will create. First we will create the waveguide. To create a waveguide, I have to consider draw box. Just randomly we will draw one box here. Then we will name it as waveguide. Let it be vacuum. And you can give the color, maybe some silver color I add here. Okay, so now we will enter the position. It is starting from 
माइनस डॉलर ए एक्स बाई टू कमा माइनस डॉलर बी वाई बाई टू कमा डॉलर जीरो ओके सो देन वी विल एंटर द एक्सरसाइज एज डॉलर ए एक्स वाई साइज एज डॉलर बी वाई देन द Z dimension as dollar L Z. So let us apply and click OK. You can see here a rectangular wave bed is created. Okay, so this is the rectangular wave guide. <coughs> Now the next thing is we have to create an aperture. So to do that, again I'll create a rectangular uh, surface. Okay, I'll create a rectangle here. Okay. So I'll label it as aperture. Then let me just uh, give the position and dimensions for this. So here the positions are minus dollar W A P divided by two, comma minus dollar L A P divided by two, comma. Dollar yes uh, A P W. That means it has to start at a distance of. There is a spacing. Dollar S A P W is a spacing between aperture and the waveguide. So then the exercise we will give uh, this uh, S A P W. I think I have not declared. Let me just declare this as five inches. So this is length. This is inches and five mm. Okay, sorry, five inches. So then we will enter here dollar W A P. This is dollar L A P. Now we can see uh, <coughs> an aperture is created at a distance of five inches from the waveguide. So here is my waveguide. And here is my aperture. Now we created aperture and waveguide um, with a spacing of five inches. Next, we have to create flaring. Okay, so how to create that flaring? So now let us just right click here, select faces, click on this face, just use the rotate option, rotate it, and select this object. That means this side. Okay. So now right click, go to edit. Click on surface, then go to create object from face, okay, and then right click somewhere on the window, click on edit, go to surface, and then connect. Now we can see uh, the objects are created. That means the flaring is done. Okay. Next, what we have to do? We have to select here the waveguide and the aperture object from face one. And then click on unite. Okay, so now this entire structure has become a single unit. If I select a C here, so if I just uh, go and click on this waveguide, automatically the entire thing is selected. It is just one solid object. Now the next step is we have to create a hollow structure out of this solid structure. So to do that, uh, just uh, rotate here, keep it like this. Okay, escape rotation, select. Faces and click on this front surface. So now, right click, click on Edit, go to Surface, and click on Uncover Faces. It has not uncovered, so let me just do it one more time. Go to Edit, Surface, then Uncover Faces. Yeah, now it is uncovered. You can see here the complete structure, including your waveguide portion. Now it is hollow. Okay. So next step is. <clears throat> we have to assign material properties for this okay so now to do that what we do we will select here all the faces okay so let me just select here uh holding control button okay keep rotating and select all the faces so i have selected all the four faces of uh the flared 
device. Similarly, the waveguide faces also I'll select. Okay. Just rotate and select. And the last side. Okay, so now you can see here I have selected all the sides except the excitation side. Okay. <coughs> just right click. After right clicking, just uh, go to boundary and perfect electric reselect. Click OK. Now you can see this entire structure has become a perfect electric structure. Now we have to assign excitation to the excitation port. This is my excitation side. Right click here. Then click on excitation, assign excitation. Click on wave port. Okay. So click next. Select here the integration line. Just to see here, you can just draw a line from here to here. So now click next, finish. So you got an excitation, you got a <coughs> material. Okay, so now we can see that. You see here, so this is my perfect electric material, and this is a excitation. So now the structure is done. Next thing is we have to create a radiation box for this. To create radiation box, what we do? We select draw box, <coughs> just drag and drop some wave. Okay. So rename it as radiation box, rag box, I'll write. Okay, let it be okay. Then assign the positions for this. So here this is starting from minus dollar w rad by 2 comma minus dollar l rad by 2 comma 0 then x value I'll give it as dollar w rad dollar l rat and then this is dollar z rat okay so now click apply and okay you can give some transparency to this box double click on that you can just click here you can sorry you just click here and you can just give some transparency to this. And you can observe now the radiation box is created and it is touching the excitation port. Okay. Now click on this red box, then right click, assign boundary, select perfect. Uh, this is radiation. Click on radiation, click OK. So now the radiation box is created. Next, what we have to do, right click on this radiation, insert for field setup, click on infinite sphere, and just change this from 0 to 360 degrees. Click OK. Then finally, we are left out with <coughs> the analysis setup. So to do that, click on analysis, Okay, right click, add solution setup. Okay, I'll just give here some 4 gigahertz. And then here I'll just enter some 18. Click OK. Then you can see here, setup 1 is there. For that we have to give the frequency sweep. Add frequency sweep, 1 to 10 gigahertz. Let me just keep here some linear count as some so 201 samples I'm going to take it. Click OK. So now let me just check here whether my design is ready. Yes, of course, all are green now. It indicates that it is not having any errors in the design. Okay. Now you can go for simulation by clicking Analyze All. Once you click on Analyze All, you can notice here <coughs> the status bar. Okay. The analysis will start 
shortly and you can see that green line which is moving here. That shows the analysis uh, is taking place. Okay, now the simulation is completed. Next thing is we have to uh, observe the results. To do that, let us click on results, right click, go to create model solution data report, create a rectangular plot. First, let us plot S parameter that is S11 in DB. So click on new report. See from the graph it is very clear. So the designed antenna is having a very good uh, resonance characteristics that is S11 parameter in an entire range of 1 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz except at 3.5 gigahertz. Okay, you have uh, some reflections. Otherwise, it has uh, very minimal reflections in the entire frequency band. Similarly, we will confirm that with a VSWR graph. To do that, click Create Model Solution Data Report, Rectangular Plot, and select VSWR. Just click on New Report. You can observe here, the VSWR is also is well below the 2, okay, and it is very close to 1 in the entire frequency band except at 3.5 GHz. Okay. So next, similarly, we will plot the impedance. Create model solution data report, rectangular plot. Then we have your uh, Z parameter, select magnitude, click new report. You will get a impedance plot. So in this plot, it is clear. So the impedance is very close to 375 ohm here. Okay, you can see here. It's very close to 375 ohm in this uh, band and which is very much required for uh, radiating it into free space. Next we will see uh, radiation characteristics. To do that, create far field report, go to 3D polar plot, select here gain and here dB. Okay, so just new report. So it is showing a directive radiation pattern. You can see here, it's, uh, the maximum radiation is pointed towards the direction and the gain that what we are getting for this particular antenna is uh, 13.8 dB. It's a huge gain. Yeah, 13.8 dB we are getting. And uh, now let us plot the E and H plane radiation patterns. Go to create far field report. Click on radiation pattern and here select gain. Select dB. Okay, so uncheck this one. Now go to families. Here for 5, you just select 0 and 90 degrees. Just select 90. Then click new report. See, we got the E plane and H plane radiation patterns here. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.